Thanks for tuning in to more horse racing coverage on Horse Power PSN for a Thursday night. Uh, it is September the, what is it, the 13th, John? Tomorrow is the 13th. L Lucky Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Uh, well, it's not a Saturday. That's when we're going to be. <laughs> okay. That's when we're going to be. Uh, uh, racing on the cards that we're going to talk about at Churchill. Uh, as you can see, uh, Chad is not here because he is uh, off buying horses. So, uh, what is that like a, 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 a multiple day affair? It's like uh, two weeks, actually. I guess. Wow. So, so, yeah. And where is that? Kentucky, Keelan. Of course. So, we're going to get a whole bunch of stories when, next time we see Chad about how his trip went. Uh, but this is also the time of year where things are, uh, you know, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, and we're going to have a major up in November. So before we get there, uh, we have some of these weeks. Matter of fact, Woodbine is like the big day on Saturday, right? Woodbine, I believe. Yeah, they have a, yeah, they have a bunch of turf races that are interesting, but uh, we opted to stay in the United States. Oh, and by the way, uh, so I, obviously I was watching the, the races that we uh, did last week uh, at Kentucky Downs, and I we had ne I don't remember ever doing it. Well, I'm sure we had done it once before, but I don't recall it. But, yeah, I mean, wow. Trying to figure out who in the world – I mean, they've got the, they've got the, the camera you, angle. Excuse me. Did I put you on alert before? <laughs> did, I you, did I tell you yes or no? I think that's worse yeah, than – million dollars in purses and they can't get a damn a drone or something to give you different camera angles oh my lord it's just terrible i don't know how I, it's like the, it's like you have to be glued to your horse like you can't miss a step because you have to find out yeah, exactly they, where he they, is they, they switch the camera angles and you lose them anyway and then even when they're coming down uh the stretch you, you don't know who the hell's leading you're just looking at a horse that's coming at you Unless you know who your horse is and what his colors are, you have no shot. It's terrible. Yeah, so that was last week. And uh, this week at Churchill, uh, we're going to handicap two out of the three. Actually, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got one of the three graded stakes races. Uh, that is the grade three uh, Aroquis. So that's Iroquois, the, Iroquois. Iroquois. That's a lot better. Uh, and, and that's <laughs> coming up. Uh, that's going to be race number 10. That's what's going to be available to viewers here on YouTube. But the first race we're going to handicap is actually the, Louis, the Louisville Thoroughbred Society Stakes. And this is race 9. It's a 6 furlong race. And this is the one that we're going to start off with on Patreon. So if you are not a Patreon here on our channel, uh, we're going to say goodbye to you in just about a minute. Again, $5 a month. That's it. You get all of our coverage that is not seen here for free on YouTube. You can cancel at any time. Uh, and if for some reason you just can't do that, well, please make sure you subscribe because until we get to 1,000 subscribers here on the channel, then we cannot provide all of the content for free here on YouTube. But once we reach 1,000, we will. Uh, so that's why if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Just hit that subscribe button. And also let us know if you have any questions or comments, which we will always be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. But let's go ahead, John, and uh, see what we've got in store for us on Patreon. Let's move on to uh, race number 10. And that means we return here to YouTube. Uh, and again, if you want to check out what we talked about with race number 9 over on Patreon, uh, you can check it out. Just uh, click the uh, link that we provide in the description area. And by the way, if you see the the, the, the more in the description area, you got to click that. And then a whole big box pops up and all our links are in there. So keep that in mind, too, because sometimes uh, you have a problem finding out where we keep all these links. So if, if you see the more, it'll be there. Just click it. And that's where all the links will be. And I'll put a link also uh, in the comment section pinned to the top to make it easy. Okay. So and hit subscribe, hit subscribe. Oh, How yeah. many of you do? What do we got? 300 to go? Yeah, we still feels like we've been in 300 for like about uh, three months. So, yeah, we got to get things going here. Uh, or else we'll have a try. Well, also, we're going to try a different strategy. I don't know. Our strategies are changed every six months. Okay. Yeah. So, so, this is the grade three race. 
And uh, so th is this considered like one of those, because it's a two-year-old race, so these are horses that we may be seeing in the Triple Crown, uh, uh, whatever you call it. The, uh, yes, the Triple Crown run. Guess what, Greg? This is the first race of the year where points will be allotted for the Derby. Oh. So I don't know how many, but I was reading somewhere that uh, the winner, I guess the first three place finishers on, on that run one, two, three in this race will be getting points for the Derby. The only problem is, let's be honest, it's kind of early. We're in September and they're already talking about a race that's nine months yeah. away. I doubt maybe two or three of these, these may be around by Derby time. Nine months in horse racing is an eternity plus. So this is a mile, and uh, taking a look at the uh, what they've listed as the morning line favorite, looks like the five, the five to two shot, and that is uh, Owen Almighty with a red uh, Ortiz Jr. on board. Uh, and, and you can see why. I mean, he's got two races, a 12 and a 13. So it's very impressive to come out with a 12 and 13 uh, to back it up. So that's not bad. Two wins. Um, so, two for two. He's done well. He went backwards a point. The problem yeah. with this race is, and usually we try to honestly to avoid races like this because they're lightly raced horses. What does one race really mean? A lot of times, you know, you've been looking at sheets long enough to say a horse goes 18 and then in his first on, then we'll run a 12 in career start number two. Not every horse is squeezed for their best performance first out. Some trainers do like to win early other horse trainers like to you know for horses to just gradually improve on their own so that's why betting races like this are usually tough but there was a re the reason i picked this race to do is because there was a horse that ran in saratoga the number 10 horse jonathan's way you know there was one ultra impressive two-year-old race with a horse named fierceless um he got he broke from the rail that day he got left he rushed up anyway he came back in the hopeful he lost his shoe that day. He ran second. Anyway, other than that horse, this horse ran one of the most impressive races I've seen all Saratoga meet. And I really just like got a liking for this horse watching that race. The horse was terrific. Phil Bauer, the trainer, does a great job. This is another horse uh, that has a work over the track. And again, I think this horse is going to repeat that 12 or possibly make a forward move. He's stretching out to a mile. He can handle it. He's drawn well. You know, it's a one-turn mile. It's not two turns. It's kind of a, a turn and a quarter because they have a crazy layout there at Churchill, their mile race. It's out of a shoot. But uh, I was just so impressed with his first win visually that I would come back and give this horse another shot to make a forward move today. Yeah, the 10 is actually the second choice and He's deserves it. That's a fair price. I mean, you yeah. know, listen. A horse like the four, uh, Authentic Strike, ran once and ran a 13. Yep. The five has a 12 and 13, like you said. The seven has a 13. So there are other horses, obviously, that are all within striking distance. You know, even horses like the one who has a 15, the three has a 15. There's a lot of ways to go. I ended up on the 10 because of that impressive win. If you get a chance, go back, watch the replay. It's worth looking at. All right, that sounds like a good idea, especially as you said. I mean, the, the the horses that have actually made a forward move include the one, a 20 to a 15, the two, 24, 16, 14, even though the 16, 14 was on turf. Uh, we also, let's see, have the eight, went from a 22 to a 15. Um, well, that's the whole point. We were talking about what does one race really mean? Nothing, because you just said it, 22, 15. So a lot of these horses make that big uh, move in their second start, you know, and uh, especially if they have some time off, I'm hoping Jonathan's away fits the bill. Uh, the 12 is a six to one shot and uh, it started with an 18 at Churchill, then a 14 at Churchill, both wins, and then came out of Churchill, bounced to a 17. So you would think then the 12 will revert back, or at least you would hope he's going to revert back to maybe a positive, get ahead of that 14. But the only thing is 12th position and only 6-1. to one. Well, 12th position isn't the problem. The good news is he's 2-for-2 two two over Churchill, so we know one thing. He absolutely loves the track, so yeah. that's a good thing. You know, you want to use him, you certainly can. That's the whole point. You can make a case for a lot of horses in here. Why go with the favorite? 
Yeah, that's true. Uh, because you would think also, uh, unless he turns out to be one of the top uh, well, horses we'll next year, out. we that's will. Hmm. He's probably uh, maybe, uh, I know it's all early, but maybe he's got a dud or at least a non-winning race out of him. Uh, you can't win them all, again, unless you just happen to be that diamond in the rough. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll bet against that. Uh, and also, uh, we take a look at, um, as you said, the other one that might be interesting because of the odds, is because you got the 13 on the 4 at 12 to 1. So yeah. uh, that's kind of surprising. Why do you think it's only 12 to 1 after their 13? Well, he ran at Ellis Park, where the, the, the 10, for example, was ran at Saratoga. You know, even Owen Almighty, I know, ran at uh, Ellis Park as well. It's not as glamorous a track as Churchill. You know, I don't know why. They just uh, – that that and what's really surprising is they knew the horse was a good horse. He won off even money his first time out. Yeah. So, and not easy to win at seven furlings. So he's got a lot of reasons that uh, he could run another good one. And uh, at 12 to 1, he's a must use. I was using the 10 Jonathan's way over the four authentic strike, the five Owen Almighty, and the seven Sandman. 10, 10 over four, five, and seven. 10 over four, five, seven. And uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead then with the four. So let's do four. Uh, and uh, let's see if there are any ones. I mean, obviously the 10, uh, that's a no brainer. And the 12. I'll do four with 10 and 12. Four uh, with 10 and 12. Okay. Yeah, four with 10. So you're going to go with 10 over four, five, seven. And then, of course, in race number nine, um, uh, we're not going to let you know here because uh, that was on Patreon. Uh, but if you ask us nicely, uh, we might let you know. Uh, but anyway, thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Stay safe and be well, everybody. Thank you. Sounds good. All right. That's uh, Jonathan Hardoon. And I just want to check out to make sure, look ahead to see what's going on because we've kind of flown by here, which is nice. I mean, uh, as I've uh, kind of warned everybody, it is football season. So a lot going on on my plate. But horse racing has been something that we have been covering, John and I. And I know we kind of just goofed about it, but John and I have been doing this for a long time. I, you know, I bet you if I, if I really, really crunch the numbers – I would say we have been doing this for about 10 years. I can't even believe I'm saying that. And keep this in mind too. 10 years and we hardly ever miss a week. Imagine that. I mean, that's crazy. 10 years, hardly ever missing a week. Of course, we had a stretch about a year or two ago where our schedules got conflicted and John and Chad, we just couldn't do it. And that was that was that went on for about five weeks. That was that that was completely something that I had never done before, where I was doing shows by myself, if you recall, uh, still using the sheets. Obviously, I wouldn't do any of these shows without it. But yeah, uh, it's been uh, I, I got to add all that up and see what the heck that is because it's an awful lot of handicapping races over the years with John Hardoon and of course Chad joined us just a couple years ago. All right, so. Let me see what we got in store for next week. So next week, by the way, there's the Jockey Club Oaks is uh, at Aqueduct. And I, I want to remind everybody, too, in, in the, the description, we've got a link of how you can acquire the sheets for the races that we handicap. Now, of course, you can acquire the sheets for anything. But if you want to buy the sheets just for the races that we handicap or you want to buy the entire card, you can do that. I've got a link in the description, so make sure you check that out. If you have any other problems finding this stuff, just let me know. But again, it's going to be there. It's always there. You just have to find it. It's not that difficult, but sometimes I know you miss it. Again, hit the more button. Another box pops open. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering what the more is, just because there's only a certain amount of information that can fit there, the more means that there's a lot more stuff, uh, and we need the extra box in order to uh, add the information, which we do, that includes all the links. Okay, so next week, looks like we have some more Churchill. We've got a grade three Dogwood. So that's it at Churchill next week. We also have a grade three Princess Rooney at Gulfstream. And I don't know I know we've uh, done the Princess Rooney before, so it looks like a Gulfstream. We haven't done the Gulfstream in a while. So maybe Gulfstream is in the cards. Because once we start talking Gulfstream, uh, then... Uh, because we are getting to that time of year. 
Uh, we also have a big one at, Pen at Pennsylvania Parks. We've got the Pennsylvania Derby. So we have the Grade 1 Pennsylvania Derby. We have the Grade 1 Cotillion and the Grade 2 Gallant Bob with the Grade 3 Turf Monster and the Grade 3 Greenwood Cup. So that's at Parks next week. Those are, that, That's the track where all the big races are going to be. So again, we've got a Churchill Grade 3, a Gulfstream Grade 3, and we've got big races at Parks coming up uh, for us to choose next week right here on Horsepower PSN. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Questions, comments, just fire away. And uh, best of luck out there this weekend. If you're a football enthusiast, if you like to gamble on football, then head on over to Prime Sports Network. Head on over to Art Lads. That's the channel uh, that I produce the football programs. We've got the handicapping programs with legendary Hall of Fame sports handicappers, just like John for Horse Racing. So you can check that out. Mark Lawrence, Jim Feist. Uh, we have the Playbook Experts YouTube channel where we handicap football games every Wednesday, even though we did it Thursday this week. Every Thursday on the RLED's football YouTube channel. That's where uh, we record a weekly NFL and college football handicapping show. So if you're big into football and you like to wager on uh, the NFL or college football, check out Prime Sports Network. But most importantly, check out the RLED's football channel and also playbook experts and uh we should have a link in the description for that as well i have to if i haven't put it in there i should so best of luck this weekend and we'll see you again next there hopefully we'll have chad back again he's on the road uh we weren't able to hook up with him because of it sometimes we're able to hook up with him but sometimes it just gets to the point where we don't want to put them on and have all this, you know, interference. And it's just, it's just not good. So we just, Chad, just deal with what you got to deal with, uh, kick some ass, buy some cool horses. And we'll talk to you next week. Just like we'll talk to you next week.